Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be going over my research study over the effect of project-based learning on high school student marketing achievement. My name is Ashley Nate and I'm a graduate student working towards my master's at Morningside. I have a bachelor's degree in business teaching and finance. Currently I've taught high school business for eight years and next year I'll be my district's elementary at-risk coordinator. We're seeing a problem in the United States right now where math and reading scores, according to most recent data, are on the decline. We all know that the world is changing and evolving. There's more technology than ever before, and the students today are different and learn differently than students of the past. There's a lack of engagement problem that we're seeing with poor instructional practices that might be the culprit for leading to poor comprehension. And if students aren't interested in not listening and not comprehending, ultimately leading to those lower achievement scores. Beyond the classroom into college and careers, statistics are showing that students are not ready. According to data from ACT, only 25% of high school graduates are ready for post-secondary education. When they enter college, one statistic used to see how ready students are is how many students need extra help to be successful. And currently 20% of new college students require remedial coursework in order to succeed. After college and into careers, the problem is that many employers are saying college graduates don't have the key skills needed to be successful in the economy today, particularly 21st century skills such as communication, collaboration, creativity, and the like. And this lack of 21st century skills that's ultimately coming from the lower achievement and the lower engagement is having a larger impact on the economy in general, costing over $200 billion a year spent on finding the minimal talent to work and then training those employees in the skills that they simply do not have. The reason I chose the research topic of project-based learning is because I'm very passionate about hands-on learning being an approach that can address these problems of low engagement, low achievement, and a lack of 21st century skills. And I wanted to be able to collect quantitative data to analyze its true effect on achievement. In the past, a handful of methods have been utilized in order to address these concerns. One example is using cell phones in the classroom for educational purposes. One study found that when using a mobile response system, the students had higher grades. Gamification is another approach that has been used with the idea that it heightens engagement because the students are interested in playing the game. One study did find in a physics classroom that playing a word of ray game led to higher test scores and it also led to higher enthusiasm for the task. A flipped classroom is another method used often where we take the direct instruction outside of the classroom to do more hands-on work inside of the classroom. However, one study found that a flipped classroom model does not have the same level of positive effect on every student. It really depends on their academic achievement and how they prefer and learn best. And then lastly, one-on-one -on -one initiatives where we provide each student in a building with a device is another big initiative and push that has been used in the United States a lot these days, including evidence from two states did find that the school with a one-on-one -on -one digital learning environment had modest gains over schools that did not have one-on-one -on -one devices. The issues with these past interventions is they don't necessarily address the lack of 21st skills that are missing. Additionally, they show that technology alone will not lead to better achievement if it's not paired with effective teaching methodology. And this is where project-based learning comes into play. Project-based learning can take on a variety of forms, but the commonality is that the students are active participators in their learning and expected to problem solve, collect data, and use it to develop their own conclusions and prevent present findings. Research shows that when students are actively participating and constructing their own thoughts, that thus is influential in deepening their understanding. Learning that involves more than just simply regurgitating information from students having listened to direct instruction leads to the learner understanding the material at a higher level and being able to draw more complex connections between the content and real life. Right now, there's a gap in the research for project-based learning. There's a, a quite a handful of studies that are done over 
the qualitative effects, such as how engaged students are and their enthusiasm increasing from project-based learning, but there's little studies that are done over the quantitative effects, like an actual solid increase in achievement scores. Another gap is that the focus is on elementary and middle school in most studies, and there's very few studies in a high school learning environment. And then lastly, there's very little research over career and technical classrooms, such as marketing, because most of the research focuses on core content areas. The purpose of this study is to determine the effect of project-based learning on high school student achievement in a marketing classroom. The independent variable is the use of project-based learning as a teaching method, and the dependent variable is the assessments the students will take, shown through their MBA research test scores. The hypothesis was that students will demonstrate an increase in test scores after learning from project-based learning methods. And the impact this could have is to provide data-backed evidence to support why teachers should use project-based learning in their classroom. There was 15 students who could participate in this study in a high school marketing classroom. 11 of these students were seniors and one was a junior. There was 10 boys, five girls, and they were all Caucasian with no individualized education plans. The school is located in a school of 1100 in a rural Midwest town. For materials, the students used a marketing textbook and study guides, which were used during the direct instruction phase. A DECA integrated marketing plan rubric was used to grade their final projects from the project-based learning phase. And then they also had MacBook Airs because they are at a one-on-one -on -one school. The assessment is from the Marketing and Business Administration Research and Curriculum Center, which is known as MBA Research. It is comprised of 50 multiple choice questions taken from five marketing course guides. Though, according to the testing center, there is no means at this time to measure the validity. Each test item is aligned to a specific validated performance indicator, which tests the content validity for each specific topic being tested. The average reliability of all the MBA research exams taken in 2017 was 0.9145, making them very reliable. The procedure for the study was carried out using a paired samples research method because there was only one section of the marketing class. Students began with taking a pretest. After the pretest, they moved to the baseline phase where they received six weeks of direct instruction over marketing content. This was all lecture based and using study guides. There was not hands on learning or projects involved during this phase. The students were passive learners. After that phase, the students took the test again at midpoint. The treatment phase is where the project based learning occurred and students composed a marketing plan for a local business. During that phase, students were active in their learning and they had to come up with their own ideas. They were not just simply taught direct content and vocabulary, but they had to apply it and use complex thinking. There was no new content taught during this time, but rather they took their past knowledge and they had to use it in higher levels. After that treatment phase, they took the final take of the MBA research test. The students took their tests in PowerSchool Learning Management System after each test. The uh, test results were inputted into Excel, and then from there, the Excel spreadsheet was ultimately uploaded into JASP to perform the statistical analysis. As you can tell from the graph, the results from the study showed that the students' main scores increased after the direct instruction phase, and then once again after the project-based learning phase out of a scale of 50 points possible. Most notably was the increase in the mean scores between the midpoint and uh, after direct instruction and the post treatment after project-based learning. At midpoint, their scores were 38.6 out of 50 on average, where after they learned with project-based learning, though they learned no new content, they still increased their scores to their highest point of 42.1 on average, showing that it deepened their past understanding to use project-based learning methods. A paired samples t-test as can be shown by the numbers below, showed a statistically significant increase in achievement as a result of project-based learning. And this uh, confirmed the hypothesis that student achievement will increase when using project-based learning instructional methods. It's brought up at the beginning of this study that underachievement is the problem in the US shown by declining math and reading scores. Statistical findings from this study suggest that project-based learning has a positive effect on achievement, perhaps because the students 
are better engaged. It could be said that weak mathematics and reading scores may be due to students disengaged in their classrooms who are sitting bored with mediocre teaching methods. Teachers should move from simply direct instruction ultimately to being a guide on the side and allowing students to formulate knowledge on their own. The fact of the matter is that disengaged passive learners can't comprehend at their highest level. We need to move students from a passive zone to being more active learners. Students need to be able to sift through information, determine what's relevant, and then construct their own thoughts, which is more important than just simply piling on excess content and vocabulary through lecture-based instruction. The results from this study show that even though after direct instruction the student scores increased, they increased once again by an average of 3.5 points after project-based instruction had happened, perhaps because it took their initial learning and it deepened it to its highest level. So we should always move towards that direction. In today's more technologically advanced world, students have information at their fingertips. So what Project Learning asks them to do is not just find the information, but move on from that to evaluate and use it and present it in effective and creative ways. Students in this particular study were required to determine marketing strategies for a real life business in our local town. During direct instruction, they learned the vocab of what the strategies were in textbook examples. However, during project-based learning, they had to dig deeper and think more complexly about which of those strategies would work for their business and then research how to fully implement it effectively. And this is probably what deepened their understanding of that terminology as shown by higher achievement scores. Educators should tap into technology and use it to create higher level learning. The technology alone is not going to lead to higher achievement if we don't ask them to do higher level and more complex things with the technology like project-based learning does. Findings from this study help to provide evidence in support of constructivism theory because constructivist principles are mimicked when using project-based learning methods. Since the students are asked to form a connection between their past knowledge and then use it to create or form formulate their own new or deeper understanding. By forcing students to take vocabulary like the marketing vocabulary and then apply it into meaningful ways like actually placing that on a local business and how it could be used, that developed a more profound grasp and is probably what led to a demonstration of higher scores. Furthermore, it's been shown that student choice deepens a student's desire to learn, and having autonomy is part of constructivist principles as well. Since the students were able to select a business of interest to them, it probably led to more engagement in the product project, which ultimately led to higher achievement. Two implications can be drawn from this study. First of all, teachers should integrate project-based learning strategies as an instructional approach regularly in their classroom since high school students can benefit from this. When the students are active in their learning process, it leads to multifaceted improvements in both their engagement and as shown by these study results, achievement as well. Furthermore, project-based learning utilizes 21st century skills, which helps to address the issue of poor college and workplace readiness where those skills are lacking. The second implication is that teachers need adequate professional development to implement project-based learning effectively. This is going to start with administrators and coaches who are often in charge of putting together the PD. Having valuable professional development will not only ensure that project-based learning instruction is implemented effectively, it'll also heighten the teacher's desire to want to implement that into their classroom and see the reasoning for why. A few limitations from the study. First of all, the sample size was small of only 15 students students with very limited demographics. A recommendation would be to be larger sample sizes, and not only that, but to be able to test students in multiple ages, genders, and ethnicities. Second of all, limitation was that this was a paired sample study. A recommendation would be to do independent samples because then we would be able to better isolate the effect of direct instruction in comparison to the effect of project-based learning. A third limitation is the question of student effort, particularly at the high school level where students are very motivated by external factors such as a grade in a grade book. A recommendation is for the researcher to ensure that they communicate the expectations of taking the assessment seriously 
or possibly looking into providing incentives. And then last limitation is external influences such as school days missed due to snow days or student absences. The recommendation to overcome this is just simply to have more studies. There's some external influences that we cannot control. However, more studies would be able to allow us to apply the data more across the board and use the results conclusively. 